What's going on my dudes? I hope you guys are all doing well. A few years ago, I took a trip to Iceland with my sister Hannah and my best friend Mike. We all had an unreal time. However, this trip was a little bit different. Back in 2017, I started to see pictures of Iceland pop up online more and more frequently as I was scrolling through things like Instagram, and it looked absolutely insane. I knew that we had to go. That being said, we knew that Iceland was expensive, and being recently graduated young teenagers, we were all broke. Thankfully, what we lacked for in money, we actually made up for in sheer determination, because rather than postponing the trip until we could all financially afford it, we thought, why wait? Let's just pool our money together, get a four-door SUV, we'll just sleep out of it, and we'll do this trip on a super tight budget. Let's just say that this made for a pretty unique trip, and I'd love to tell you guys about it. We began our trip in Vancouver, Canada, where we boarded our plane and took an eight-hour flight all the way to the country of Iceland. After arriving in Iceland, we went through customs, grabbed our bags, and then immediately went to pick up our rental car, which we'd be living out of for the next 14 days. And we are now in beautiful Kaflavik, Iceland. The ride of choice, we went for the Dacia Duster. Uh, originally, we were gonna sleep in the back here, <laughs> and I think it's still possible if you throw these seats down, but Mike and I Hannah don't, don't think, think so. it is. After coming to terms with the car situation, one of our first stops on the trip was a coffee shop in the heart of downtown Reykjavik, which is Iceland's capital. We ordered a modest three coffees and just a little bit of breakfast, but when the bill came out, that was our real first taste of how expensive Iceland was going to be. Our coffee and pudding this morning cost me 17 Canadian dollars <laughs> to drink coffee and eat a pudding. It's craziness. Yeah, that hurt the wallet a little bit, especially after deciding that we were going to do this trip on a budget. That wasn't fun. From then on, we decided to scratch the coffee shops, ditch the restaurants. We were going to be living and eating out of grocery stores. That's all we we're gonna be doing, grocery shopping. I could not afford Icelandic coffee every day. Over the next two weeks, we'd be making trips to Bonus, which is actually Iceland's most affordable grocery store. So when in Iceland, this is the place to go for cheap food. Look for the cartoon pig. Our trips to Bonus worked great and all, but there was one tiny problem, and that's that there's only 31 Bonus stores in Iceland, 25 of which are surrounding Reykjavik. That meant that there was only six other Bonus stores around the country, so we had to strategically plan our grocery shops so we'd be able to shop in a city, eat our food throughout the next couple days, and by the time we ran out of food, we needed to be in the next Bonus city. Yet another day of shopping at the bonus. <laughs> Got new spoils, some cookies, some bread, and a ton of yogurt. I guess those are just some of the challenges that you come up against when you're traveling with essentially no money. However, we were getting to see Iceland, so none of that mattered. We were having a great time. Dude, how does Glimmerfoss make you feel? Sweaty. <laughs> that is unreal though, eh? That's fantastic. Do you like it, Hannah? It is nuts. It is nuts. It had been a few days on the road and we were starting to get into the groove of things. We had determined that the ideal sleeping situation was Mike and myself in the passenger seat while Hannah would lay out across the back seat and we'd fold our chairs kind of on top of her. It's bedtime. Got Hannah and a ball in the back sleeping. I'm right here in the front. Mike is usually in the in one of these seats we alternate. I think this is one of those things I need to clarify though. When I say ideal, all I mean is that it worked. I don't mean that it was comfortable. In terms of where we slept, we would often opt for random pullouts on the side of the road, which were free. The law is a bit dicey when it comes to the legality of sleeping off-road in an SUV, so if we were ever close to a town, we'd just go to a campsite so as to not cause any problems. Finished driving today. Camping for the night in Akureyri. That's how you say it, right? Probably. Look at that view we have though. The days in which we did not make it to a campsite involved wet white baths in place of showers and eating out of the car rather than at some sort of picnic table. Snacking on some uh, Icelandic peanut butter or as they say the faint hunis de major. So it's the, the classy camping life. To me, the basic creature comforts we were forgoing was more than made up for by the sights that we were seeing. Honestly, day after day, I was just blown away by the insane geography that makes up Iceland. Yeah. 
We were halfway through a trip at this point and well into a basic routine. Wake up in the morning, eat some breakfast, pack up the car, and get ready for another day of driving. At this point, we were crushing a few hundred kilometers every single day, making really good pace around the island. I'm sort of driving everywhere on the road to avoid all the potholes. I'm pretty sure we're the only people on this road. <laughs> However, this morning was unlike the others. We, uh, we were driving last night, got a bit tired, and we decided that we'd just pull out on the side of the road, just like one of these random pullouts off the freeway, which is right there. They have these all over Iceland. There's a lot of them that have a no camping symbol, so we look for one without that. It should be fine. We thought it was fine. We're pretty sure it still is fine, right? Yeah. Like, it should be fine. Anyways, uh, we slept all night. It was, it was great. Some dude came up to our window, like, not even five minutes ago and just started banging on it. He was very upset that we were sleeping on the road. He said that tourists like us are what is destroying Iceland. He went on and on and on. I think we were being pretty respectful, but regardless, we just said, okay, okay, sorry. We packed up our stuff and we just continued on our way. So from that point on, we decided we wouldn't risk it anymore. We just camp in proper registered campsites, but that was definitely going to eat into our already tight budget. At this time, we also began to realize that we were still visiting Iceland in the shoulder season, meaning that it wasn't summer yet. Oh my gosh, it is dumping snow outside. Because of that, the temperatures were still prone to drop and we were getting some really cold nights that were a great addition to our already dicey sleeps in the car. At this point, I started to realize that I may have underestimated how frugal I could actually go before it started to have an impact on my enjoyment around the trip. Our goal was never to be so cheap that we missed out on things that we wanted to see or be so frugal that we weren't enjoying the trip itself. But that line was quickly beginning to blur and I wasn't sure if we were going too far. Although our tight budget was starting to take a toll on us, the main things being the uncomfortable sleeping situation and our terrible diet, we had faith that we could push through just a little bit longer as we were already three quarters of the way through our trip. We were essentially SUV life experts at this point and we had our systems down pat. Our go-to dinners were instant noodles and if we felt like treating ourselves, maybe we'd get a can of beans or two, but that's only for special occasions. And then throughout the day, I'd snack on yogurt cups and I'd add some oatmeal in there to add some more sustenance, making that a delicious and nutritious snack. Icelandic lunch right here. We got some hot dogs, some, some crispy onions, some honey mustard barbecue sauce, and whole wheat bread. Let's just say by this point in the trip, I was feeling really, really healthy. One of the many amazing things that I realized about traveling Iceland on a budget was that everything that we wanted to do and see was free. We were able to see everything that we wanted to see in Iceland without having to pay a dime more than our living costs. And that's not a possibility in many other places in the world. Iceland is really cool in that sense. What makes Iceland so special is its geography, and that's freely accessible to anyone who's able to make it there regardless of your budget. From hot spring rivers up in the mountains to iceberg beaches along the coast, it was all free. Mike, what do you think of this hot spring? It's uh, 10 out of 10, uh, would, would swim in it. For it's sure, nice. for sure would swim in it. By the time we wrapped up the trip and hopped on the plane, I think that I spent just over 900 US dollars. I'm not gonna lie to you guys and paint a better picture than how I was actually feeling. When I got on that plane, I was glad to be leaving Iceland. We're off to board the plane. We're off to Canada. Like that one? That was awful. Thank you. I was ready for an actual bed, a good shower, and some home cooked meals. That being said though, it was one of those things that my mindset totally flipped after a couple months. Once I was home, showered up, had a couple good nights sleeps and I felt rejuvenated, I started to miss Iceland. It's weird how that happens. And looking back on it now, three years later, all I have is super fond memories with my sister Hannah and my best friend Mike. So would I do it again? Maybe with a bigger car, a tiny bit more money and some knowledge of how to cook. You see, there's definitely benefits to having a bit more freedom financially when you're going on a trip like that. However, I do think that there was something fun and comical and super unique about the trip that we took with such a strict budget. Had money been no object, we definitely would not have slept in the same car that we did, eaten boxes of instant noodles, or spent days of the trip wandering through grocery stores. But looking back, I'd have it no other way. Beyond our trip just being cool because we got to see Iceland, was the fact that it was one of the most memorable trips that I've ever been on. 
I don't plan on skimping out like I did on that trip again, but the memories that we made were definitely worth it. And there it is, dudes. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what your most memorable trip was. I appreciate every single one of you so much, and I'll see you all in another one.